Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second installment of the 2022 Soderly Presents People and Perspectives. This is actually, um, a, since 2006, we've been having wonderful speakers here at Soderly. And the last few years, we've combined uh, wonderful events for our Common Ground and for our speaker series. And this year, we're rebranding it under a new name, Soderly Presents People and Perspectives. Many of these events will be part of our Common Ground Initiative now in its fifth year. And this is one of those events. Our Common Ground programming is brought to us this year by the Maryland Humanities and the Maryland Heritage Area Authority, two organizations that have long believed in the work that we're doing in Sauterley to promote dialogue and understanding. The group that we have here tonight I just don't know what to say. They're like some of my favorite people in the world. I'm <laughs> so excited. Um, you're going to love hearing from all of them. And in just a moment, I'm going to turn it over to Jeannie Pirtle, our uh, Director of Programming and Partnerships to do the formal introductions. But just a few little housekeeping things before we all get started. If you're joining with Zoom and you're not a usual Zoom person, do you know that you can choose your view if you put your cursor up in the top right hand corner. You can choose either to watch all of us like the Hollywood squares, or if you'd like to have the speaker be bigger <laughs> on, your, on your screen, you can choose that as well. At the bottom, if you move your cursor toward the bottom, you will see both a chat. We would love for you to sign into the chat. Let us know where you're joining us from tonight. And that is where you can talk amongst yourselves. Unlike our other platform that we sometimes use, however, if you'd like to ask our wonderful presenters tonight a question, rather than putting it in the chat, if you could please put it under the uh, button labeled Q and A, and we will be able to see it there. In case somebody forgets and they put in the chat, we'll still try to monitor and bring it over for you. But if you can keep the two separate dialogues going. So sign in, let us know where you're joining us from, and you are going to love the people who are here tonight every bit as much as I do. So Jeannie, with no further ado, I'm gonna turn the program over to you. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and we want to thank the um, Maryland Humanities and Maryland Heritage Area Authority that makes this programming possible with uh, their grant. And we appreciate uh, them so much uh, that uh, they believe in our mission and they want to support us. So um, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce the panel uh, to you. And uh, we're really excited. Uh, uh, I think you're, you're going to really uh, learn a lot and be inspired uh, tonight. Anna Mosley, she, she was born to Joseph Jack, Jackson Holly and Elizabeth Brooks Holly. She's the sixth of eight children. She graduated from Banneker High School in Love, Loveville, Maryland. She continued her education at Bowie State University with a degree in education. She taught in St. Mary's County Public School System for 32 years and she's now retired, wow. Uh, she's the wife of a retired Army veteran, the mother of one son and, and grandmother of one grandson. She started working with UCAC around 2001, um, and she uh, is a member of the UCAC Historical and Research Committee. Uh, she also is a docent at Drayden School and the Interpretive Center. Uh, she has assisted in interviewing a few interesting St. Mary's County residents. I'm sure that's a mod very modest statement there. Um, Alma Jordan. Alma was born in Valley Lee, Maryland to Catherine Shelton Thompson and Leroy Thompson. She's the second oldest of 13 children, educated in St. Mary's County parochial school system. Her post high school education, uh, she is an LPN. Uh, in Baltimore City Hospitals and an RN. She has a degree from the University of Hawaii Health Science degree from San Jose State University, and she is retired. She worked in the medical field nearly, nearly 40 years and lived and worked in Massachusetts, California, Texas, Hawaii, as well as Maryland. 
Uh, she is the wife of a deceased Navy veteran, the mother of two, one deceased, grandmother of two, and great-grandmother of three. She moved back to Valley Lee, Maryland in 2000. She served on several boards since returning to St. Mary's County, including UCAC. Uh, she is now the chairperson of the History and Research Committee for uh, UCAC. Dr. Janice Talbert Walthour. Dr. Uh, Walthour is a lifelong resident of St. Mary's County, Maryland. She's a retired educator who worked in the public schools for 36 years as a teacher, resource teacher, assistant principal, principal, and coordinator of academic intervention programs. She graduated from Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland, and earned a master's degree from George Washington University in Washington, D.C., and a doctorate in administration and supervision from Nova South Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Dr. Walthour is the immediate past president of the St. Mary's County branch of the NAACP, number 7025, and chairs the Education Committee. She is past president and currently a member of the Unified Committee for African American Contributions, UCAC, whose mission is to document, increase understanding of, and foster African American contributions to the history and development of St. Mary's County while advocating for improvements in health, education, and community building for all citizens. She has been awarded numerous citations for professional and community services. In 2018, she received the honor of lifetime achievement from the St. Mary's County Commission for Women. She's an active member of St. Peter Claver Catholic Church in St. Indigo's, Maryland, a longtime poet and motivational speaker. She enjoys preparing and presenting thought-provoking messages that inform and entertain the audience. She's been married to Larry for 37 years and they live in Lexington Park, Maryland. Donna Barber was the sixth of seven children born to Alice Ruth Somerville Barber and James Bernard Barber, who were employees of Mabel Ingalls at Soderley. His parents instilled him with a strong work ethic and he worked in the gardens until he left Soderley in the mid 1970s. Donald's parents impressed on him the value of a college education as well as their inability to afford college tuition. Donald was a strong student and was awarded a National Merit Scholarship that enabled him to attend St. Mary's College of Maryland, where he achieved a bachelor's degree in social science. He embarked on a 30-year career in human services, working as a social worker and a mental health professional before returning to Sonali as a volunteer, serving many years as a trustee. Donald is now the current president of UCAC. Donald mm -hmm. is retired and living quietly in Hollywood with his wife, Rosa. So thank you each and every one for joining us tonight. Um, so first of all, I'd like you all to uh, respond if you, if you want to, but tell us a little about the history and purpose of UCAC as you see it. Um, can you, can you just inform us of what it is? There may be some people out there that don't know what it is. Anybody can go first. Um, yeah. I joined the uh, UCAC before it even existed. I started um, attending the uh, uh, salt and pepper breakfasts at the um, Cedar Lane apartment complex with uh, um, Mr. Richard Portee, who was uh, a retired educator and uh, um, my landlord at that time. So uh, uh, he would come by and pick me up in the mornings, like early, like 6.30 and head over to Cedar Lane for breakfast. And then they would have these lively discussion groups and they called it salt and pepper because it was, uh, um, there was a pretty even breakdown of the races of the participants. So, um, um, I remember uh, Mr. Ralph Butler, who was uh, um, a retired uh, educator at the time, he thought that, uh, um, he stated that breaking bread together was a good way to, uh, um, to get to know other people and to have a free exchange of uh, thoughts and ideas. So uh, he was uh, um, very much in favor of that and the little group they used to meet at Cedar Lane. They were just all very friendly and it was a lot of fun. So uh, um, 
like I said, Mr. Portee would swing by early in the morning and pick me up and away we would go because we would go there and eat breakfast. And then I had to go home and change my clothes and go to work. So uh, that's the way we started our day. So uh, um, the uh, germ of the thought for UCAC was generated in those breakfasts. And then uh, um, it became more of a, I, I think they were really uh, focused on creating the monument, the African-American monument. Um, they wanted to uh, uh, emphasize the, uh, the contributions of African-Americans in the county to the history of the county. Because um, generally at that time, you heard very little about the, um, the uh, uh, contributions of African-Americans to the history. Because there was a lot of uh, emphasis on um, people who came to the county on the, they could trace their family back to the Ark of the Dove and things like that. So, um, you know, he thought that other people had a uh, history that was uh, um, significant and, and noteworthy and should be emphasized and, and, and spread around. So that was the idea. And the uh, UCAC grew out of that. And uh, as I said, they concentrated early on creating a monument at the, uh, that's in Lexington Park. And uh, um, it just evolved from there. So I've been very happy to be involved. It's been a, a, a rewarding experience. So. Yeah. And uh, the founder was Elmer Brown. Mm -hmm. And Elmer, uh, his family lived here in St. Mary's County on a beach called Smith's Beach. But he <laughs> grew up in Washington, D.C. And uh, so when he came, he retired and came back home to live, but he also worked here in the housing uh, uh, department. And, uh, and he said, he told, uh, you know, Elmer was the kind of person he'd come get you. <laughs> so he came to get me. <laughs> I'm sitting in my office as a principal at work and he and his wife, Johnny, who was so instrumental, she worked side by side with Elmer. They came down to my office at school and said, we need you. And what had happened, they, they had a group and they were going to build this monument. And that's what uh, Donald just said. It was to be centered, it was centered around sharing the contributions. And he said he was sitting around with my uncle, who's Alma's dad, Leroy Thompson. And he said to him, Is, has anyone ever done the story of the old timers and what you guys have done here in the county? And he said, I think we ought to do a monument to show you know, the contributions of African-Americans in St. Mary's County so that folks will be recognized. So it started that way, just like Donald said, from the salt and pepper groups with Elmer, very involved in that. And then, you know, connecting with, uh, he liked to fish and do things. He liked to join in and just be a part of everything. So he started that, that uh, the Unified Committee for Afro Contributions, uh, contributions to, to do just that, to build this monument and they wanted to actually put names on the monument. But as the committee grew, which was very diverse, folks from St. Mary's College, who've always been very uh, progressive, Meredith Taylor, Bob, Lewis, uh, Tony Porter, a lot of people got involved with it. The first monument was going to be, oh, it was a beautiful monument. It was a man and, you know, with, it, 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 but it was very expensive. And so I, 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 could, I think Elmer was kind of frugal, frugal. <laughs> so <laughs> the big expensive monument really didn't come to fruition. So that's where you got the pyramid. He had people go around like Spencer Scriber and they got stones from areas in the county to put together this pyramid monument. So those guys worked on it themselves. Nancy, should be a picture of them around that monument. If you get it. Yes, ma'am, I will pull that up for yeah. you so you can see yeah. that. So let me go through and I will do this for you. And they were so uh, proud of themselves. They there they are. And they were so excited about that. And you see, they they did uh, a lot of work on that. And uh, and Elmer is in there. And so so that's how it all began and it evolved. And so the, the pedestals around that monument really talk about the contributions of African-Americans in all the fields, history, education, uh, politics, religion. So if you go and visit the monument, read the pedestals because that's what it's all about. And um, 
we are looking now to add some names uh, on plaques of people that have, well, of course, Elmer, we want to uh, do these three heroes project uh, that we're involved in. And it's uh, going to be Elmer Brown, Sheriff Joe Lee Somerville and John Lancaster will have a little a plaque with just some recognition of what they've done in the county. And that's what it's for. And that's how it evolved. Well, I actually um, moved back to the area in 2000 uh, from the California area. And it was just at that time when um, they were starting to, um, they were good at actually getting ready to dedicate the monument, I think. And um, I wasn't, uh, you know, I was interested in what the group was doing, but I didn't belong to the organization. And one of my friends asked me to join. She said she was moving out of the area and I should join to fill in or take her place. So I thought, well, I'm not, you know, really doing anything in the community yet. So I joined at that time. And uh, the organization was very interested in what they were doing uh, in the community, all of the uh, interviews that had been done in the past uh, were interesting to me because I've read some of them. And uh, I've really enjoyed being a part of the organization. Uh, Anna, welcome back. Um, yes, so ma'am. We <laughs> yeah, we we, glad we found you again. So you. Um, we, we, the first prompt was um, tell us a little about the history and purpose of UCAC. So um, um, tell, I'll, I'll, I'll segue that into the next prompt, which was please share your personal story related to UCAC and why is it important? And I'll start with you. Okay. I believe it's important because of all the history that we have uncovered during the interviews and reading and visiting places. And a lot of times people don't know about these. So if we can get them to hear about it, then they might become interested and involved and join us. And um, I like the UCAC because it has a lot of history. And I, it took me a while before I joined, but now that I'm in it, it is very, very interesting. And I have learned a lot about people and places here in St. Mary's County. Uh, Donald, um, can you elaborate a little bit more? You started to tell your personal story about UCAC and why do you believe it's important? Oh, okay. I believe it's important because uh, um, the UCAC helps to fill in some of the uh, gaps that are in the, um, I don't want to say the official history of the county, but the uh, um, kind of like the popular history. The thing that the um, we've found is that uh, um, there's a good number of uh, older citizens that really no one ever interviewed in any way, shape or form before. And they have uh, quite a bit of knowledge and are, are willing to share it. So uh, um, we decided to, uh, um, to really focus on interviewing um, older uh, citizens because you know, we want to get them down uh, in writing or recorded before it's too late, and the, you know people start to have health issues or whatever that would make it difficult for them to uh, contribute. So uh, um, that's what it, I think the main functions that UCAC has accomplished that is uh, very rewarding because, um, like I said, generally people kind of think like, ah, I don't have anything to, to contribute or nobody's interested, but people's stories are incredibly interesting and uh, um and people have some memories because you know you think back as far as you can think back about your own experience in the county and it really only goes so far and then you speak to people whose whose experiences go way back further and uh, um generally 
you know, because you say, oh, you may be exposing some painful memories. People have a tendency to uh, uh, remember the good things. You know what I mean? It's not, I think it's human nature to, you know, try to make the best of a situation. And that, that's been one of the uh, um, surprising, really fortunate things that we found out are the, uh, um, just the, the joy that people, uh, they communicate when they're talking about their experiences. So, yeah, you know, people talk about, you know, growing up in a house and having the same bedroom with, you know, 10 other children or something and not having any electricity or running water or anything. You think like, oh my God, it'd be like a horror story. And, you know, they just talk about it like it's, a, a, you know, it's fond memories and thinking back. And because what they can do is put things in perspective. You know, you talk about the different, um, the different characteristics of modern society. You know, you have all electronics or uh, communication, all these tools and things. And then they talk about what was there before and draw a line that connects that time to this time. And it's very interesting. It's it very, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, it's inspiring to, to listen and talk to people. So mm -hmm. I think it's been one of the great main functions of the UCAC in, uh, in doing these, these oral histories. Yeah. Alma, uh, what do you believe well, is important about the UCAC? Well, I think uh, just uh, interviewing people, a lot of them have so much to share. Mm -hmm. And particularly when we um, we sort of adopted uh, the, some of the survivors of Drayden School, since it was renovated, we decided to uh, try to contact the surviving members and interview them. And that has been very rewarding uh, because we learned so much about what a school day was like. I mean, that information is shared in our book uh, in pursuit of an uh, education, but also uh, just talking to people now, you know, and they talk about some of the experiences, how they, had to gather wood, how they, the games that they played and jump rope and, and how they would attach a rope to a tree to do something and a seesaw and how they had to use the outside bathroom and where they had to go just to get a bucket of water so that they could have water when they were at school. And even sharing some of the uh, information, some of the lunches that they brought to school and the little lunch pails. That was all so very interesting. And I found that in for, with some people uh, in trying to get them to agree to an interview was a little difficult, but um, the ones that did really had a lot to share. And we've interviewed people um, not just in St. Mary's County. Well, they were from St. Mary's County, but we went to Waldorf to interview one of the Drayden students. And we went to Washington, DC to interview someone. Uh, actually two people, one lady was in a nursing home and she was 90 some years old. And that was just a wonderful experience for Meredith and I to do that. So uh, there, there were uh, lots of interesting stories that we were appreciative to have documented. Janice? Well, my experiences with UCAC is that of being a leader, a worker bee, an initiator, uh, being creative and never giving up. And, um, and I think that those, and, and having it, the education and to, uh, and using it for the purpose of uh, documenting African-American history and providing information for children in schools and working uh, at the state level and doing all kinds of you, you know, workshops and programs. But somebody's got to help to organize those things and be there, as you know, to burn the candle in the midnight hour and um, do the proofreading and so many things, nuts and bolts. So those have been my experiences. And it's very gratifying to look back and, and, and to look forward, I guess, and see how many hands have 
come and are available, have been available to do this work and make these connections. But uh, hopefully more will get involved. But yeah, uh, it's been great. It's been great. You can see your, the results of your hard work and labor, labor of love. <laughs> okay, so the next um, subject, at the time UCAC was founded, and then you joined, what did you see were issues that needed to be rectified? And um, who would like to respond first to that? Mm -hmm. I will. Um, I think uh, UCAC, um, the problem right now, I see that there aren't enough people in St. Mary's County who's even aware that we exist. And it, it is a challenge for us to um, get the information out to people. So many people will ask, you know, they know about Juneteenth, which um, we have every year and it's been great. But when we talk about interviewing and UCAC, well, they don't seem to know anything about that. And we have a lot of work to do and we need people to assist us with that. So we would just really like to get uh, the name out and people, young people too, to join and help us out because a lot of us are moving up in age and we need someone to take over this job. There's still a lot of work to do. Anna? I would say that uh, since I joined, I found out that there are lots of people that um, did not know, as Alma said, did not know about UCAC. Um, and then when I helped with the book in Relentless Pursuit of an Education, reading those interviews that were written it was very interesting and it was stuff that information in it that I had never ever even heard of. But it's very interesting to know that that book brings out lots of issues that were going on in the systems around the schools, how the books were, the books for the white children were different from the books for the colored children because we got the books that had torn out pages, writing in it, coloring in it. Uh, sometimes you had to go to a friend of yours to get the information that was on the page that was missing. Um, and there are other issues that um, I felt they didn't have all of the equipment to play games outside. They used, and I have an example, they used a sock ball made out of old socks that the other one got lost somewhere and they played games with that. They played games also with what was called a Coca-Cola crate and it had the divided sections in it and they would put the bottles in it and they would do relay races with them. Um, what else did they play? They played dodge ball. And I mean, you know, kids these days don't even realize that all of this happened back then because now they go out and they play with nice looking playground equipment. And Jeannie, you would never have known any of that. That was the issue. The issue was you would not have known about that had it not been for people like Andrea Hammer at St. Mary's College who did or wrote stories in, uh, about in my time when I was coming along and who did oral histories of, uh, of both African-American and white folks. If it hadn't been for Jefferson Patterson Park uh, bringing exhibits to the Tri-County area to uh, talk about the African-American schools during segregation, you would not have known about the, that exhibit, which we now have in our uh, interpretive Cindy, you would not have seen a book written by African American folks uh, about, and not by, but collectively, white and black mm -hmm. help to put this together. But it would not have been in existence 
That was the issue, the absence of African-American history in St. Mary's County. You would not have seen a guide like St. Mary's Resource uh, Chamber of Commerce during that era, era that would have had Juneteenth in it, which is one of our signature events. So those were the issues that we had then and uh, that have come, you know, we have now a presence. You would have not seen monuments for African-Americans, the United States Colored Troops. People didn't even know about that until Adolia Shoebrooks over 20 years is trying to get that program going to build this monument. So uh, that, that, those were the issues that we were confronted with and many still don't know. Like we said, that's the issue. They mm -hmm. don't know these materials exist. Some of them are in the school libraries for the kids. I don't know if they're on the shelves or off the shelves, uh, but they're here. And it's about St. Mary's County. It's not about Baltimore or, or California. It's about home and things that people have done. And I think that's so important to know about your community and to be invested in your community. Those are my issues. And, and we also, um... One of the, the, the problems, well, I guess we consider it is a problem is, you know, with financing to support all the projects that we're doing uh, with the interviewing and, you know, all of that is an expense because we have to have, have it transcribed and logged and all of that. So that's an expense that uh, we have. We're, we're selling, we have bricks that we, that are uh, placed over in the Elmer Brown uh, Park and we're selling bricks at $50 per brick. And a lot of people have bought those as, um, you know, for their family members. So that's an ongoing project that we're doing. And at, for the three heroes that Janice mentioned, uh, we have a fundraiser for that because uh, we have to purchase the plaques. So with UC, UCAC website, ucaconline.org, um, you know, that is available to, for all of you to check out and see what we do, see what we do, see what we have done, and perhaps consider joining us. But I also want to talk about um, some of the other projects that we've done. We uh, did a um, wayside markers. Uh, there are four of them, and they actually uh, focus on African Americans in St. Mary's County from the end of slavery until the base opened in the 1942, I think. So each uh, each wayside marker is about a particular uh, area, and um, you know we had ships that came to St. Mary's County uh, to deliver products uh, at Sodderley and also at, um, at uh, Drayden. I remember uh, reading an interview of a lady, um, Miss Thomas Ma uh, Maddox, Miss Maddox, and she uh, talked about her dad who was uh, we call them morticians now, but then they called them undertakers. He was an African-American undertaker. And she uh, had to take the horse and buggy and go down to meet the ship to, uh, to bring back the caskets uh, that her dad needed. And they were shipped down from, I guess, Baltimore down to, uh, down to Drayden. And some other very interesting stories. One man was talking about, you know, a lot of people in St. Mary's County raised tobacco, but he, he felt that he could make just as much money raising chickens and uh, selling eggs because tobacco was a lot more work. And mm -hmm. uh, that was something that I was reading uh, that Mr. Chase decided that that's what he and his wife would do. But in um, some of our interviews, um, I know that uh, one person we were interviewing, they were kind of 
quiet initially, and then they started talking about uh, some of the things that they did in, in St. Mary's County, uh, baseball and, and the Piney Point Eagles and the Ballady Parrots and those types of things. And they got so excited telling all about those stories, you know, and we had people who um, talked about where they met their husbands. Oh, I met my husband at, at Happy Land. And I thought, you met your husband at Happy Land? I was surprised that your dad let you come to Happy Land. <laughs> and she said, oh, he used to bring us to the ball games. And that's where I met my husband. You know, so some of those stories are so exciting because, you know, once you get folks talking, they will continue to expand and share other things with you. So uh, I'm going on and on, but that was, that's oh, exciting. Oh, you're good, you're good. <laughs> love it, I love those stories, <laughs> I love it. Donald, did you, did you have anything to add on, um, you know, what you felt needed to be rectified when you first joined? Oh, ABC? okay, I mean, at the time when I first joined, I really wasn't thinking in terms of any kind of rectification. I just thought of expansion, like the, like the story was incomplete and we need to help fill in the holes. And plus, the other thing I thought is that no one values your history as much as you do. So if you share that, then if people are completely unaware of something, they couldn't possibly value it. So by sharing the stories, I think it, it improved the, uh, the knowledge base of the community in general. And it, it was more of a unifying kind of thing. Because see, one of the things that you find as you interview people and talk more and more are common threads. It's okay, you know, I said, well, um, I think one of the things that Alma mentioned was the kind of games people played. And see, that's kind of universal. And uh, um, it doesn't, I mean, it's not a thought you automatically have. So, you know, you're speaking to someone who lived many years ago and they was like, well, you know, we used to play uh, uh, with, a, we used to hit a sock ball. So then, <laughs> you know, other people would say the same thing or they would talk about how they would take string and wind it tight and then put it inside of a sock and you hit that. So mm -hmm. it's just amazing the ingenuity people had to have fun. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a common thread and it's a unifying thing. I mean, you know, cause once you start talking about things and just, oh yeah, you know, then the people pitch in and, and they talk, they share their, their uh, experiences and it just makes people closer together. And that's, uh, um, that's what I'm saying. It's the, you don't really think in terms of rectifying something. You think that in turn of uh, broadening the base and, and making things more inclusive. And I think that's what we really had tried to accomplish with UCAC. Yes. So, um, Th this tell us some about some of the projects. I think Alma uh, already started a little of this, but tell us about some of the projects that you have worked on that have been the most rewarding, the most successful, or the most difficult and or. I can start with that one. With the most rewarding, I can't think of anything that was more rewarding than working on the book because um, it, uh, um, the book contains a great deal of oral history. So um, there's nothing more rewarding than speaking to people and having them open up. And, uh, that was really rewarding and, and really informative. And then uh, um, working with the um, other members of the committee on trying to edit, you know, because you have this mass of information and data, but then you have to try to see what's uh, relevant, what's important, what relates and try to put it in some kind of an order that's uh, um, and makes sense to people. So it was, it was, it was a challenge, and it was extremely rewarding, and it was actually fun. I mean, to be perfectly honest about it, it was, it was, it was a, a very positive experience. In terms of um, of learning or hearing things that you find um, are disturbing or 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 agitate you, that's been really minimal because the thing is, people have learned to cope with their situations from the beginning of time. And uh, um, that's just human nature to cope. So uh, um, the positive is, like I said earlier, the shared experiences. So, you know, people talk about things and get it out in the open 
and then they really are not even aware of the uh, uh, the level of shared experiences until they've uh, um, spoken. And then you know, once I think uh, uh, the UCAC's uh, projects have have really increased the amount of understanding and gotten more information out and uh, just made it more accessible to people. Um, because people have a tendency to communicate in small groups. So there may be stories that you only tell within your family, your own family, or, or just a very small select group of people. And then by putting them into the book and uh, um, openly communicating about things, it kind of tears away some of the, um, the shame and, and kind of, I don't know, negativity and just makes things more, uh, more open and more communicative. So it's, it's been, like I said, very rewarding and a very positive experience. And um, I've, like I said, been doing it for many years. I started in the, in the mid nineties. So I've been at it for a while, so. Uh. Okay, Anne? Yes, um, I worked on the group that was writing the book. I guess I started later years. And I can remember Sundays we spent at the library editing that book. And sometimes we would get there like 11 o'clock and didn't get, get out of there until about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. It was really, you know, like, like Donald said, you know, you had to edit it and you move phrases and sentences around, but you didn't change the person's uh, thought that they had given you, but mm -hmm. it was really interesting and it was rewarding. And when we got to the final, final project and that book was, we had gone all through it and we had put it all together. And when we saw that first book, and they bought it and showed it to us. We were some happy folks to see that <laughs> book all finished. Absolutely. <laughs> because it was, it was a long, hard process. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I agree. Um, Jeannie, the book was very exciting. Uh, and it was an outgrowth of the exhibit. That was very exciting. <laughs> Uh, putting the yeah. exhibit up because it was professionally done, but they interviewed us and and brought brought in our county's history. It was done in other counties with their histories, but we our history was there. So people came in and did little focus groups, and so that that was really and uh, wonderful. And then for that to be developed, and then the library, who they've been such wonderful partners, like Soderly. They were just opening the new Lexington Park Library, and we had the exhibit there, and we brought the school kids, and every fourth grader came to that exhibit, and Anna was a docent, and we had the games. They had the whole curriculum for us, what they did, what a school day was like. They measured out the uh, with the, um, a tape the, the size of the room that 50, 60 kids had to sit in, and and, and and so that was just very rewarding as well. And um, and the book at that time that that exhibit was uh, portable. So we were able to take it around to a uh, SMECO took part of it and put it in their entryway during African-American History Month. And the schools, Great Mills High School took it and had it in their library. So that was wonderful. And I also just love the, uh, the uh, monument, the USCT monument, the work that went in that. Yes. And uh, look, Idolia Shoebrooks was part of that committee and she'd have us down and feed us. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of social, if you knew, if you were going to Idolia's, you were going to eat. So, and we met and we had projects, we had fundraisers for that. We had like a, a, a hero's walk where we, during Black History Month, we uh, walked and talked about uh, African-American history and the, we toured the old jail, things like that, that we did to, to raise money for that monument. And so those were all re really exciting. And, and we love the children's presentations we've done yeah. to share the UCAC's work in, on African-American history. Mechanicsville Elementary every year, they had a multicultural day every other year, I think. And yes. our team would go and present to them and the kids loved it and we loved it. Uh, yes. So that was, that was some good times, very exciting things that we did then. And just recently, uh, the NAACP and the UCAC and the museum division worked on a Bitmoji. And that's a project we hope you can uh, get a 
kind of glimpse of that um, at toward the end. And it's just a project where you have uh, all the museums and parks. Uh, it's like a little virtual field trip that you can go on. Kids can go on and see what it, what uh, happens at Sardarly. And Sardarly has wonderful tapes and videos and we have information on, on this Bitmoji. So just getting the youth involved. We had the Global Village that did the Juneteenth plays at Juneteenth. Uh, so I think as we said earlier, you know, we've got to keep the kids involved. Yeah, oh. I, see, I see somebody put up 300 years of black cooking on <laughs> here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, somebody's interested yeah. in your cookbook. Oh, yeah, that, that was actually Evelyn Holland and the Community Affairs Group did that. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and they donated it to the library, but we were involved with that. Many of us were also involved with that. Mm. Thank you. Some um, some of the other things that we were um, asked to be involved with from time to time. I know we were contacted by um, the Georgetown uh, University. Uh, play project the 272 and we were asked sometimes um, if we knew certain families that they were trying to re research and obtain information uh, for their research um, and one person that uh, that um, I helped with was um, they needed they were trying to contact a Yorkshire and I, we had a gentleman at my church who was a Yorkshire. I, we called him Mr. Yorkshire. I think his name was Tim Yorkshire. And he agreed to meet with them. And he met with, uh, I think, Melissa, Melissa Refner. And she interviewed him. And actually, the uh, Washington Post did a whole article on that interview, it was on the front page of um, the one of the Sunday papers in the Washington Post about four or five years ago. So that was a connection that you know we were very excited and proud about because uh, you know that was a, a successful contact. So uh, we have been asked to uh, contact several other people as well. Yeah, I think our friend Darlene. Uh, Yorkshire is in the audience. Tonight. Yes, <laughs> yes, his daughter. <laughs> yes, but that was that was exciting for me that you know that all of that was done. Yeah, and I guess for personal gratification, I guess for Alma and I both, our grandfather was the t first teacher at Drayden School, and we got to see a lot of that history. Uh, uh, he was there like for 14 years, I believe. And I found something that said he got paid for the fall, winter, spring, and summer terms. He got paid $180. And uh, <laughs> he, did, but he was a farmer as well. And then I, being uh, going to the segregated schools in the county, graduating from a segregated school, uh, of course, we learned a lot. And, and I had information about, I have just a little folder here. And it's, um, it is actually a letter from Langston Hughes to Miss Marie Jo Brown, who was oh. the secretary at Carver. <laughs> she was an actress who came here with the USO and stayed. And her friends were uh, Langston Hughes and the gentleman that played Amen, uh, that movie Amen. But Miss Brown's letter, he's telling her how to make the circuit. But he, and I, I it's a copy of it, but her friend Rose uh, Nelson has it in the Schomburg Museum up in New York. So, wow. I mean, those things are just like personal things that uh, uh, that I have connected with. And my buddy Alonzo Gaskin, his mom, Elvera Gaskin, is featured in the book. But I have a picture of his grandma, Miss Hewitt. <laughs> She was the cafeteria manager at Carver, and in the background is hold that up, room. hold that, hold that up, <laughs> hold that up, and keep it a little still so we can see it a little bit. Yeah, that's Alonzo's grandmother. Okay, and she was the cafeteria manager at Carver, and they made uh, oh my goodness, 
the cherry tarts that they made with the vanilla <laughs> ice <laughs> homemade. <laughs> 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 like, so those are really fond memories of uh, people and the connections are there, even if it's not necessarily in, in a book, just having been exposed to it personally and wanting to share it, want to make sure it's in a book or another book. Mm -hmm. That's important too. Yes. So one more prompt, you all are doing great. Um, we're perfect um, as far as time goes. One more prompt and then we'll get to questions. I know we, we're gonna have to do this again soon because this <laughs> an hour is not long enough. I told you guys it's gonna be fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want you all to respond to this one. Speak about your legacy. What do you want young people to come away with? What is your vision for St. Mary's County youth? Their quality of life, access to authentic and truthful history. Hmm. So any or all of that I would like to okay. do. One of the characteristics of modern society is the disposability of things. So uh, um, like, uh, I mean, the culture has really uh, embraced the concept of, of disposability. So, you know, like if you think back about your parents and grandparents, they always had like china or silverware <laughs> things, you know, like material things that they valued and would pass on. But now um, people really don't do that. It's more like uh, uh, you have plastic forks and paper plates. <laughs> 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 and the idea is to have things that are recyclable and uh, not to, uh, um, not to fill up the uh, uh, the landfills with uh, um, waste. So uh, um, I think, uh, um, and then, like I said, you know, they say, well, you know, they can put, they gather up all your, your metal, aluminum cans and things, you can recycle it. But the idea that things are just disposable and it's supposed to be used and then discarded somehow has uh, really taken over. And it's not, um, it doesn't do much for continuity in terms of, uh, people valuing things and pass it on and, and having that connection. So I think uh, um, for the younger folks, they're gonna to have to come up with some kind of other way, things that are not, because I mean, if you think about like Snapchat and things like that, it's very impermanent. Like uh, whatever post or whatever you make only lasts a certain amount of time and then it's gone forever. So uh, the, um, the idea that something would be, uh, um, enduring and durable enough to pass on and you know, last over a course of time is a, is, a, uh, is a concept that seems to be fading out quite a bit. And it's, uh, it's something that you lose at your own peril because I can remember um, uh, Mr. Ralph Butler when the, we were first starting the UCAC, he said that you can't tell where you're going unless you know where you've been. And it's, it's a very profound statement. And it, um, it's something that, that meant a lot and means a lot. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's very, very true. I want the young people to come back home and to, to want to be in St. Mary's County. And I, 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 everybody wants to, of course, you know, see the world and make big money and all that. But you know, we want to thrive and grow and, and, and we need our, our young people to want to be here. We, we need things like YMCAs mm -hmm. to keep them active and involved. We need historical societies. We need cultural centers. We need things that, that will want, make them want to come back. And so that is it. So this history and this work to uh, show the contributions of your culture uh, of all sides is very important. Uh, so that's that's what I really want. I came back home for love mm -hmm. of family and uh, community. And, and I just think people leave and don't look back. And that's sad. Well, Janice, it used to be that people uh, would move away to Baltimore and Washington and came home almost every weekend to baseball games and whatever, you know, they were always here. And uh, we've learned that when we've talked about interviewing uh, about different businesses, we've done one 
on Happy Land, on Lot. And uh, another business was uh, a locksmith, one of our um, UCAC members, uh, uh, Mr. Lawrence and, um, you know, Nathaniel Lawrence and all of those things. But even in my own family, when uh, the family is around and the young kids are there, I try to bring them and introduce them to family members that have passed on. And the teenagers actually hide from me. Oh God, here comes out <laughs> and now again. And, uh, but the little kids, some of them are very interested and they do remember. So that's something that, you know, I'd like to instill in them that that, that history is important, sure. but they'll learn later, I guess. <laughs> Maybe, but anyway, I don't know. I have albums, photo albums that I always bring out. And a lot of times when my brothers come home, they will pick them up and go through. And we talk about the pictures that we see in there. And that's how we sort of keep connected because I left here and went to school. And when I came back, I'm still here. And when my mom and my dad would go places, I was usually with them. So I know I knew a whole lot about relatives that they know or knew nothing about. So in you know the photo albums I can put out, that's your aunt this and this is your uncle whoever, and that's how we you know try to pass on our legacy to the younger ones because the younger ones they put all these pictures in their phones and as Donald said they're gonna be gone soon. So if you have a photo album and you wrote a little note underneath of it, it helps to uh, educate the younger folks. A photo with names, pick names of the people and dates and places makes it priceless. If you mm -hmm. don't write it on there, uh, it, you it ends up in a shop somewhere for 25 cents <laughs> or in an old museum <laughs> attic and you're trying to make sense. Who is this? Who is this? You know. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> So I always say, mark your photos. photos. Yes, yes. <laughs> mark your photos. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, so well, thank you all, and I think we will. Um, it, it's uh, two minutes to eight, so I think we will go and see what's on the questions here. Mm -hmm. So Karen Gruber. So slavery in St. Mary's County is a difficult, and often painful subject. How do you think we as a county can honor the memory of the many enslaved African-American servants who, whose written legacy is only a first name listed in a white owner's will or in a tax register? Mm. Okay, um, actually, I think uh, um, the UCAC has done quite a bit of that because although, you know, the person here mentions uh, uh, a ledger, the name of this little ledger, but we have emphasized the oral histories. And I think that's, it makes a, a, it really emphasizes the human, the humanity of the people that lived at that time. So, uh, right. yeah, so the, the, their contributions, their lives, you know, their, their hopes and dreams and, and aspirations, those things are kept alive by their families. And that's what's uh, the families, their descendants. And I think that's the important thing is to have a, a some kind of a, a, a milieu where that person can communicate those things and, and know they'll be valued and, and listen to. And there's other people who have similar backgrounds or, or similar stories and will hear and understand and identify with it. So I think that's one of the main functions of the UCAC and groups like the UCAC. And also, the churches uh, are involved and need to be involved. I know at uh, St. John's, they have a marker for the enslaved that were just buried there with no yeah. marks. Yes. And a tribute to, to those folks. You know, we remember you. You were here. Mm -hmm. So the more of that, the more that the pastors and the churches and the spiritual community, the religious community gets involved in what happened, the history of their churches and, and all, and, and do a, a memorial. I know the, uh, the, this, the 
Sons of the Union veterans, they do that, those markers for the veterans, Union veterans of the uh, United States Colored Troops. If you know of a person that was in the Colored Troops, they will bring a marker and put a marker in the graveyard for you. So it's not just one organization that can do this. It's got to be right. a That's systemic right. plan, which is part of what the museum division is trying to do, you know, mm -hmm. and the, that kind of thing. So I think it's important mm. not to get our churches involved. It is a spiritual value oriented situation that we have. And it's not just about rules and regulations. It's about heart, mind, and spirit. Alma or Anna? No, no comment. <laughs> okay. Nothing really to uh, add. Okay. No. All right. Okay, uh, Jerome Spears, uh, one of our descendants, have any of, uh, and some of you may be related to, I don't know, he's related to a lot of people, it seems, <laughs> have, um, have any of the interviewed people offered maps and our photos that match their oral histories? If the answer is yes, where can they be seen? I don't know if any that has a map, no. Yes. Because, I mean, we would be very hesitant to, because, uh, and I, usually people don't offer that kind of thing. It's it's a family heirloom or, it, you know, they were entrusted with it by an older person, so they know to protect it. And they're very good at that. It's not going to be something that's, that's given to you or, uh, I mean, a lot of times people won't even trust you enough to say, well, I just want to take it and make a copy of it, but they don't want it out of their sight. So, and they it's very appropriate for them to feel that way. And plus, we don't really have any place to store, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing either. Right. That's why the systemic plan that I keep mentioning is so important, a cultural arts center. Yes. Because when we did our displays, we made copies and then we had a display with some of the original artifacts, but we had to give them back. But we have copies mm -hmm. of some things that go with the oral histories and all, but if we had a center where we could have these things, uh, you know, even copied or archived, uh, then it, it would, I think that would work mm -hmm. and it's really needed. There's a lot of history in addicts all over <laughs> yes. the United States. Yes. Quite a bit. Yep. So Karen Gruber, another question. I have really enjoyed reading the interviews with African-Americans included in the St. Mary's College archives. Some of these may be the UCAC interviews. Has anyone compiled a book including narratives like those describing African-American life in St. Mary's County? That book in Relentless Pursuit, that's what it's really it's composed of. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the Relentless Pursuit would be one of them. And it's a, it's a, it's a certain topic, but it does include a lot of narratives and yes. interviews. And pictures. Yes. And pictures, yes. yes. Lots of and don't forget Meredith's book, Listening In. Right. And yep. um, uh, somebody uh, behind the scenes, either Chrissy or Nancy, should have links to that if they want to put those up mm. um, in the chat uh, for, for our audience. OK, uh, and Jan Briscoe. Hi, I am reposting my question about whether there is a cookbook published by UCAC. <laughs> no. <laughs> UCAC no. has not published a cookbook. Not published a cookbook. Okay. She no. must be thinking about another cookbook that she likes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but maybe maybe the uh, library has it, maybe. Could be. They do. Or, uh, or the history. Years library. of Black Cooking, but the library yeah, has it. The library yeah, has it. Yeah. 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 The library has it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know who produced it, but there was a cookbook, yes. Yeah, we did, did a cookbook. So um, I'm going to give them uh, just a second to post another question if they want to. Uh, but before that, uh, I had another little uh, prompt. How do you measure progress? How do you measure progress? By the number of people that... Um, by the number of people that interact with projects and 
um, programs that we have. If you have a program and there are lots of people there, then you think, wow, they got the message. So they are here to learn some more about whatever it is. I measure progress by what we've been talking about all along. There's a book, there are exhibit, there's an exhibit, there's um, um, opportunities for information for children. There uh, is um, uh, those monuments and all of those were not there. So yes. a lot of progress and accomplishments have come mm -hmm. about. So there's a lot of progress that and, has been made. And Drayden School is open and renovated yeah. and we're docents there during the summer and spring. Mm -hmm. So that's progress because that before we started to work with that, you know, it wasn't open on a regular basis. Yeah, it's it's a it's an awesome place. So if you haven't been by there when it's open, uh, check the hours. Uh, it's part of the museum division. Yes. So it's well, on their website. Yes. It will be open from April through October, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's it's not that it, it it's a it's a nice uh, drive. It, you may not. I always discover new roads I haven't been down in St. Louis. <laughs> so, go for a drive. Yeah, it's really good. But I always say, you know, we have a schoolhouse uh, that was used for mainly uh, that was used for white children, basically at Sodderley, and there was one near Sodderley that still exists, but it's a house now. Um, that was for white children. So I always, uh, we always usually refer to Drayden uh, as the next, you know, you visited here, now you need to go and visit Drayden. So uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic resource to have um, in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else wanna answer the progress question? How do you measure progress? Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, just the whole concept of progress, it's really more of a feeling. It's like uh, um, one of the things that we find when we interview people is they generally say how much better certain things are now. And uh, um, that's how you measure progress. It's how people feel. They right? say, so, well, you know, back in the day, you couldn't do this or you couldn't do that or you couldn't talk about this or you couldn't talk about that. So those people, have a, a linear connection so that you know, remember what it was like before and you look at what it's like now and contrast it. But one of the things about human progress is it's really not linear because in certain ways you move ahead. And then as we've seen with the recent Trump administration at certain times, you <laughs> hit a bump in the road or move backwards or you just get stalled. So it's, uh, human progress is really not linear. Mm. Yeah. Yes. You're done. All right. Um, so uh, I wanted to tell everybody, remind everybody to go to the UCAC website, and that should have been posted on your chat. And um, hey, come and join us. Uh, join UCAC. Some of you techie young people go volunteer your services to get some of this research done. And we definitely need volunteers. Yeah. So, um, so make sure you do that. And I want to thank all the panel. And I'm going to turn it back to Nancy now. Did we want to show the pictures? Did yeah, we show definitely the pictures? Time. Absolutely, yeah. we do. But I wanted to, uh, before we get to the pictures, one one incredible accomplishment of the UCAC that you just briefly, briefly mentioned was the many years you've been putting on Juneteenth. And I didn't know if right. some of you could talk about this. This is one of the biggest Juneteenths in the state. This is an amazing, and you've been doing it. How many years have you been doing it? And talk a little bit more about it. And an in-person is planned this year, right? So I wanted to throw that yes. out. Um, I, I just, I can talk a little bit about it. When I moved back here, I think June, we had Juneteenth in California, uh, in San Jose, California. And I think that was um, 
probably the first and only one in the area of California. And when I came back here and found out we were talking about Juneteenth, uh, Elmer Brown was, it was very, very exciting. Uh, and we had uh, attended a Juneteenth uh, up in Calvert, Charles County for a few years. But then we started Juneteenth down in St. Mary's County and it was, and it's absolutely awesome. Uh, Alma and Mike and everybody has done a great job with the, the vendors and all of the uh, educational activities and the speakers and all. And also we usually have the uh, interpretive center open with programs there. And uh, we usually have a program book that's, uh, that's priceless. And so they have done such a wonderful job and all the people that worked on it, I mean, it's been great. And thank you, Mike. Yes, uh, Juneteenth is uh, our signature, one of our signature events. Mm -hmm. And the Souvenir Journal is not just about uh, the jazz concerts and things like that. It has history in it. Uh, about the, the Emancipation Proclamation is one in one of the, you know, that's written here, copies of it. And, history of uh, community folks like Stephen Young, who was the first uh, president of the NAACP here. So it in itself is like buying a history book when you when you uh, get a souvenir journal. And so, do you do you still take sponsors to help you? Yeah, sponsors that right is, yeah. right up and with the sponsors so right up the history. An opportunity. Right, their history as well. Yes. So yes. And this year is going to be in a new spot. It's going to be um, across from the uh, Three Oaks Center. Now they have a new amphitheater that the uh, park has opened that will be opening for Juneteenth. Nice. And, and, and also the Cherry Blossom Festival that we're helping working with will be in April. So that we just want to mention that as well. Well, this group never lost a beat last year because um, when we couldn't, everybody couldn't get together, it was done virtually. And this is also available on the website. You can watch the, uh, the wonderful presentation that went on, get to understand a little bit about Juneteenth in case you don't know what it is. Well, you need to go watch that, don't you? So we can make, the, make the, I'll make sure we put that in the chat as well. Maybe Chrissy, if you can find that when we can get that in. But I, would you let me to, to screen share with you guys now so we can do that? Yeah. Okay. While I'm doing that, I want you to know we have one of the links here has 30 students from St. Mary's College coming to learn from you all tonight, which is just <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Gina Godden, for bringing her class here tonight. Nice. We have people from Virginia, from DC, <laughs> two from Florida, California. They're joining from all over because you're every level of awesomeness. And so they're here uh -oh. from all over. And uh, so I just have to let you guys know that. I just thought that was wonderful. So let me go back here and see if I can um, go back to the beginning. Oh, here you go. Okay, so I'll let you guys walk through this and you go ahead and, uh, can, and, and you can talk about it and, and prompt me to move on and I can do that. This is the Interpretive Center for the United States Colored Troops Memorial Monument. And that was, uh, we got that monument as a result of our county government and UCAC uh, grant, uh, writing grants and raising money, of course, to uh, put that monument up, which you'll see later. But this was an old Flat Tops house. And Flat Tops was the uh, Lexington Manor there uh, that, uh, that uh, was the, and during the era of segregation, again, it was the white housing for military folks. And, uh, and, and they had the housing, Carver Heights was, was where black military and civilians lived. And this was uh, Lexington Manor. Or, and they tore the, the houses down, but they had to leave some historical, uh, the, uh, for historical purposes, they had to leave the building, some of the buildings. So this is actually what the building looks like. But inside is our, like an interpretive center, it's sort of like a mini museum. So you're going to get, uh, 
displays and exhibits that maybe rotate and travel, you know, from county to county or state to state. And right now uh, we've had portable exhibits. We meet there, uh, we have activities there and it's called the Interpretive Center, but we're hoping we can have many more activities and many of, of, and a variety of things in that center. Now, one of the things that will be very helpful for us is if um, any of the people that are participating in this could communicate with your county commissioner and let them know how much you appreciate the uh, existence of the site because uh, um, it was quite a, a commitment for the, on the part of the county and we really appreciate it and we want to be able to continue with it. Yes. And we appreciate the uh, museum division and Rex and Parks. Yes. Yes. Their contributions. Uh, right. And we do get a, a, a stipend or a, a donation from the county uh, to for Juneteenth. This is the monument. Yeah. The yeah. first monument we did, it's the African American monument, and it was called Freedom Park. Bob Lewis was a member is a member of the organization. Just named it. I'm calling it Freedom Park. Let's call it Freedom Park. Park. But it ended up now. The name of it is actually Elmer Brown Freedom Park. Yes. And so a lot of people go. I see them sitting around, they're chilling around it, and and I've seen people reading the pedestals and. Elmer used to chastise up. Don't y'all go sit around at the park and look at the money? <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> okay. This is the United States Colored Troops. Yes. Um, uh, monument. And uh, of course, we had over 700 men serve, uh, African-American men serve in the... Uh, Civil War that came from St. Mary's County. And uh, those mind that monument, the names are there. And also uh, we had two Medal of Honor recipients, William Barnes and James Harris from St. Mary's County who uh, were at the Battle of Newmarket Heights and you know, sh chivalry and bravery uh, earned them the Medal of Honor. Although uh, Barnes died uh, uh, of uh, tuberculosis in the Midwest and Harris didn't get his medal until some years later. But uh, so, and then we had one white sailor, um, Joseph Hayden, who was uh, also a Medal of Honor recipient. And he's on that pedestal as well because we didn't have that many people fighting in the, um, in the war. Civil War for the, for the North from St. Mary's County. And that's my grandson. Great <laughs> <laughs> that he is. Okay. And this is the Drayden School that was redone. Don Crop did a whole lot of work on it and he left mm -hmm. it mostly as it was or as it used to be years ago. It has no electricity, no bathrooms. It is um very, very old timey, you might yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if and, you go uh, to the next one, oh, not that one. Okay. Don't we have one? All right, and okay. that is still the, the, the Drayton School thing. that he fixed up. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is part of, and the pre previous as part of the Bitmoji project, one of the most recent accomplishments of UCAC being uh, contributors to this Bitmoji project. And uh, Janice, I know you were a big part of that. You want to describe this Bitmoji a little bit, and then I'll, I'll sc scroll through them a little bit. Our NAACP community coordination, Adrienne Delahunt, uh, worked with the museum division to get our story told in this, and she worked with the other museums and all. But this is Drayden School and you have, that's Christina's face. So that's how those bitmojis work. You can put your face in it. And <laughs> then, then you go to these little arrows and you can actually go inside the school and see what it looked like inside the desk, the chalkboard, you know, how small it was. Yeah. And, and what it is, you want your school, your teachers to share this information with the children so that they can, um, 
uh, if they go on field trips, this is what you'll see. This is how it looks. Or you can do more research on one room schools. And what is so neat is that we matched it up with the curriculum of the uh, St. Mary's County Public Schools social studies curriculum. So that's really, really good. And so you can see there's the book. Uh, this is really something, I mean, you know, this technology. And every, every time there's an arrow, that's something you can click on and, and learn more and that's delve right. deeper into. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. opening up another box and looking inside. Right, and Juneteenth is, is here. You can click in and, and uh, see uh, Juneteenth and what I just talked about with the colored troops. So all you do is you go click, click and lead you to more information. Okay. Uh, civil rights, this is where if you wanna click into civil rights, uh, uh, that, that tells you the story of uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Young that I talked about and what, uh, what, what, what it means, civil rights, what they are and how important it is in our democracy. And then it just leads into more of the conversation for the children and more of the readings that they're doing in their classes. A little more about the monument, the, you know, it's a pyramid and, you know, and uh, the rocks. On it. Johnny Brown says this is Elmer's wife. We're coming up on the rough side of the mountain, you know, slavery and the issues of uh, segregation. So it's not just as it said, a pile of stones. It has meaning and, it, and it's very uh, important to, to us to tell that story. And, and those are the pedestals where you have that talks about the uh, education contributions, po uh, political contributions and, and that kind of thing. And that's that Elmer Brown Freedom Park, desegregation in the schools, what it was like. And then of course, we talked about our signature event, celebrating freedom, the real emancipation, especially for those that were in states where, um, that had withdrawn from the union because Maryland, it did not free slaves when the uh, uh, slaves were not freed when the slaves uh, from the states that that were had uh, seceded from the Union were free. Not until about a year or so later, but we all have come together now to look at Emancipation Day or Freedom Day, and it's about education and celebration. That is so critical that you learn from this history. Yes. And this year, you see the date there, it's going to be on June 18th. It's always the 19th. The 19th. 19th. Oh, that's the same one. Well, if, wait if, a minute. It might, it is the 18th, isn't it? Is it the 18th? I'm sorry. June 18th. It, June okay, 18th. Well, yes. It is the okay. Saturday before that Father's was... Day. It is always, right. the, the, right. it's always the third Saturday and the Saturday. It's the 18th. It looks like the 19th on that chart, though. We probably have to change it's that. It's 18th. Yeah, okay. it's, it says 18 there. Uh -huh. So all the creators of the slide. Okay, Ooh. all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that those are just just so such small windows on <clears throat> the accomplishments of what is an all volunteer organization, and that is so important. The money to the beautiful monuments that were created, all of that money was raised by this organization, worked by this organization that understood a full and inclusive history was not being taught or understood. And by focusing on this, and I know uh, so many people here, Janice, Alma, Jeannie, myself, a lot of the members of the UCAC are part of what we have now as a history coalition. We are trying to make the local history of people of color more accessible, make it more understood by our students, by our citizens. Because as Donald said before, we can't understand where we need to go until we understand where we're from. And these stories may be the African-American stories in, here in St. Mary's County but they put the flesh on the bones of the reality of what happened in the past. And I may be, I may have been born in, in Rome, Georgia, but these are still my stories. These are my <laughs> stories because they are representative of this nation. Of all the things that happened here are a microcosm and you're putting 
uh, you know, making them, as Donald said, humanizing them. <laughs> and we're really able to understand. And if the students here can see names that they wait, wait a minute, is that your grandfather? Or is that like your ancestor or where did that person come from? Then all of a sudden they start to see it and realize how it shaped their world today. And I am just so proud to be a member of the UCAC. I hope everybody who's on tonight will go online and go join because this is an incredible organization doing great work. And for Black History Month, which Black History is, is 12 months a year, but for Black History Month, what I, we could not have had a more wonderful panel. You are doing so much to preserve a truly important history and we cannot thank you enough for all your work, for all the citizens in this county and the work that's continuing. You guys are, are truly leaders. There were so many um, comments in the chat. You are, you are termed treasures of this county. Everybody has deemed you that. So just so you know, you can put that on your resume. You've been deemed treasures of St. Mary's <laughs> County. <laughs> Thank you all so much for all the work that you are doing, the work that you're continuing doing. We're just so proud to be partners here at Sauterly with the UCAC. You have made so many of our accomplishments possible here because of your involvement and your leadership. And we are so grateful. So for everybody tonight, we hope that you will uh, come and join us next month when we have Alex Haley. I believe, is it uh, March 9th, Jeannie? It's Chris Haley, Chris sorry. Haley. Sorry, Chris, Chris, if you're watching tonight, you can get me next month and, 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 and get me. Sorry, Chris. Okay, I need more caffeine, Jeannie. <laughs> but join us next month. We're going to have more wonderful programming. If you know of people who missed it tonight and they're disappointed, don't worry. The link is still going to be available as of all the virtual programming that we've had. Um, thank you again to the Maryland Humanities and the Maryland Heritage Area for everyone, all of our Sauterly members, for the many Sauterly descendants who are here tonight and to our community. Thanks for all you do. UCAC, thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you, everyone. And, and, and Jeannie and Chris, thank you all. Yeah, thanks thank for having you. us. Thank you. Yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.